Philippians, if you're with me in chapter 3, the apostle is, is speaking about himself as he's, he's preaching, preaching about humility, preaching about his position in Christ. And he says some things I should go, oh gosh, I guess verse 4. Oh, I'm sorry, 3, 3. Verse 4, where he begins talking about himself, he said, if anyone thinks he have confidence in the flesh, I more so. I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm of the stock of Israel. I am of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted loss. We go to verse 12. And he explains, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. What is that? The purpose. The purpose of your life. Jesus Christ has laid hold of you. Brethren, he goes on to say, I do not count myself to have apprehended, or, or I ain't there yet, okay? I'm, I'm still struggling like you are. So I'm not sitting here bragging, telling you how good I am. I don't count myself to have apprehended, but, but one thing I do. He's telling us, it, it, I'm trying. I'm struggling just like you guys. But this is, this is the one thing that I focus on in my life. The one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. There's folks, they walk among us. There's folks who, though they don't live in the past, they allow the past to define who they are. They allow the past to define who they are. The past dictates how they react. Their past dictates how they filter, how they hear, how they live their lives. The past, the past is their window to the now. What, what they live now, they live through a window of the past and have carried it right along with them. Many people have done that. One year, five years, 20 years ago, it doesn't matter. Some say, they hurt me. I'll never fall for that again, ever. I'm done. I won't do it. You just don't know what they said to me. I can't let those people back in. I can't let them in. It goes on. My mother did. My father did. My uncle said. My cousins did. The kids in school said. Whatever it might have been, whatever the circumstances, whatever the people were involved, do the incidents of the past Control your now. Be careful with that one. Do the incidents of the past control your now? Whew. Paul says this, and it's just the opposite, right? This one thing I do. I'm going to forget all that stuff. I'm moving on. Today is a brand new day. Now is a brand new now. And I can't allow the past to infiltrate and mess me up on my journey to Christ. I can't let it pull me down. If we focus on the past, and our past is going to control us now. Even if we focus on the good stuff we've done, we get all puffed up, right? Sitting around talking with one another, proud of what we did 20 years ago. Well, you know what? I, I don't care. I mean, it's interesting. Don't get me wrong. 
But what about today? What about the now? What's going on in your life right now that reflects where we are, we are at in Christ Jesus? Paul advises that we don't live in the past, that we don't allow it to trip us up, or that we don't glory in the past highs because we come, become confused by all those things. They become feelings that move us. And the Bible says we're not moved by feelings. We don't let feelings push us around. Greater than that. The Apostle Paul says, all oh, that's behind me. I'm moving on. I want to share with you all this morning that the purposes of God for you. Everybody say, for me. The purposes of God for me. The purposes of God for me. The dreams in my heart this morning for my life, they're placed there by God. You didn't just get those. God didn't just weave and knit a blanket in our mother's womb. He knit, he knit a picture. He knit a personality. And our personalities many times become warped and defeated by the things that we've been through. Our hearts get hardened. Our speech gets coarse. We're missing the boat. God dreams, I'll tell you this morning, they are alive and well within you, whether you're alive and well or not. They're alive and well within you this morning. I want to share with you that they're there. God dreams have no expiration date. God doesn't have to go back and reorchestrate the entire world because you ain't following it. He's watching us. He's working with us. What was I born to do? Have you asked yourself that? Have you asked yourself that? God. God, what was I born to do? I got a good job. Was that always born to do? Is that kind of it? I just do my job? What was I what was I created? What was I knit together for? What was I made? We need to find the essence of who we are. What was I born to do? What was I created for? Knitted in my mother's womb by the hand of God. For what? We can take serious, we can take a hard look at where we're at in our life right now. What were we born to do? Look at where we are, look at what we're doing, look at what we have done, and ask, how do all of those things line up with the God purpose in my heart? How often do we find ourselves chasing our lives rabbit trail somewhere and wind up far from the purpose that God has called us to? Not unhappy. We don't have to be unhappy. But the joy that Christ wants to rise within our hearts come when we appropriate His call and follow His direction for our lives. And everybody's different. Everybody's different. I had a brother and a sister they sent cards, man. I mean, they sent cards out. Thank yous, how are you, where you been, uh, just thinking of you today. Uh, God loves you, and so do I, so pff, you can't do nothing about it. Just, just, and encouragements, and that was, that was their, and I tell you, I miss them. Because those cards used to come in the mail, and it's like, wow, thank you. It doesn't have to be any grand scheme. Only the purpose that God has placed in our hearts. There's no expiration date. I'm going to show you a video in a moment. Galatians 5 1 says, Stand therefore, therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. People, we can say we're free. We can shout, Hallelujah, Jesus died for me, I'm free and be as shackled as ever in our hearts and in our souls. But God has a different plan. Would you play that for me, please?
Seems pretty fast. Yeah, in every direction. Well, he's so beat up, it's hard to tell what he's like. I just can't help feeling they got him so screwed up running in a circle, he's forgotten what he was born to do. He just needs to learn how to be a horse again. Well, how do you do that? How far do you want me to take him? Charlie stops. Okay. That seems like a pretty good ride. Hope so. Biscuit. It's one of our favorite all-time movies. The reason we love it so much is, is because throughout that movie, I know I've played that clip probably five times in this church, all for different sermons, but it's there. All throughout that movie are strands. Strands of Scripture, strands of Jesus Christ. All, all throughout that film, Hollywood had no idea what they were doing what they came up with. If you ever watch that thing, your bell will be ringing constantly throughout it. Um, Charles Howard, that's the businessman. He wanted to get into horse racing. Lost his wife, lost his son, and really needed to find himself again. So he bought his first horse, Ski, ski Biscuit. <laughs> oh, so they went out to track, see what they got. What they had was a handful of problems. And I love that lady's comment. You know, he seems pretty fast. <laughs> and then the trainer, yeah, in every direction. I think more often than not, I've thought that of my own life. How many times have I, I just been on, on fire in every direction? Going everywhere. Trying to be everything. Trying to be everything for everybody and trying to fulfill everybody else's purpose and trying to to do those things I'm going what you know what wait a minute what whoa slow this thing down slow this thing down I can't I can't do this see biscuit had baggage he'd been abused by people who had only one way excuse me of trying to get the best out of a horse and not only did their methods fail they screwed the horse up they carved deep and lasting Memories in his mind and in his heart that he just, he ran, but he didn't run. He ran shackled. He ran hindered. He was trapped by his past. He wasn't going to respond to training designed for a horse who didn't have a happy childhood. Okay? Some horses in here didn't have a happy childhood. That'd be insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. It ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. It'd be rare to find an adult anywhere, and I'm saying even in this church, in the churches out there, it'd be rare to find an adult anywhere who isn't carrying some baggage from the past that is not affecting them in the now. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you, it's there. We may go day in and day out 
those old wounds in our soul are okay. They're, they're just there. But when we get shocked, when we get cornered, when we get surprised, this thing rises up. I think we've all done it. Reacted. Ask yourself, you reacted to something, you ask yourself, where did that come from? What, what, what was that all about? I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to be like that. I didn't even know that was in me. Huh? Huh? Am I just talking to me this morning? I'm telling you what, it's us people. There's a lot of broken people in the world, and yes, even Christians who have not yet appropriated the inner healing and have moved on to the fulfillment of God's purpose in their life. Christian brothers and sisters that are so beat up it's hard to tell who they are. As church, religion, got us so messed up and running in circles that we've forgotten what we were born to do. So heavenly minded that we're of no earthly good. Just need to learn what it means to be a Christian again. How do you do that? Give him his reign. Let him run. You let him run. So often the church shackles people and, and wants to direct and just control. Of I am not a controller. I'd like to be, but I lose control. So controlling of people's lives. You can't do this and you can't do that. Don't go do this and don't go do that. And there's, there, is, there is a level of commitment that needs to be taken by the leadership, the pastor, and direction, and helping people's lives. But I think the church as a whole, oh, am I saying this online? Sorry, guys. Hinders people. Hinders people. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And I have come, Jesus said, that they might have what? Life! Life. Woohoo! Life, abundant life. That's what he's given us. That's what he's given us, and it, it kills it kills you when you see people living so far underneath their potential, what they could be, where they could be going, what they could be doing in Christ. Yes, it's their walk, but my goodness, you just want to go, come on. Just look at all the movies and, 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 the, and the, the books where the hero's broken, right? He's broken. He's trashed. He's got to work his way through all these past failures until he can finally, at the end of the movie, be the hero, right? People, we don't have to do that. We don't have to work our way through brokenness. We only need to receive healing for the brokenness. What about the scars? Jesus heals and leaves no scar. How many tens of millions of copies of the purpose-driven life were sold? Why do we think that? Because there was tens of millions of people that knew for some reason they just couldn't realize their potential. Seeking a way. When the Word of God says, I am what? The way. The way. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't think it matters how old you are, how young you are. The soul of man desires to succeed. Everyone in this room desires to succeed. To live a successful life. But it need be a successful life for Christ Jesus. Not a successful life in the eyes of the world. We live for Him. And that's a question. Do we? Do we live for Him? Wow. I'm not being mean, man. I'm just reading this stuff. I just... I loved it when the trainer said he's so beat up it's hard to tell what he's like. 
Well, am I just talking to me this morning? I mean, look around. If you could see in the spirit, everything would be bruised, bleeding, broken. Jesus is our healer. Jesus sets us free. Our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives. Through abuse and training, Seabiscuit lost not only his confidence, he lost his essence. It's his essence. Who, who are you way down in there? Who is that person God made you to be? Because it's not like the person sitting next to you or three rows behind you. Who, who? Who are you? Way down deep. And why can't that person get out? Is he shackled by his past? Things that have taken place in my past have formed me and made me into a completely different person that w than, than was in that womb. That God made me to be. And don't get me wrong, the, the past does teach us. But we don't live there. We don't live there. Walk out of it. That's why we pray for our young people here. They're born, knit in their mother's womb with a purpose and a future and a hope, and I want them to walk in it and not wind up all pooped on <laughs> by the time they get older. We want these children to be free. Well, I don't like the way the kids run out of... I'd let them run. In fact, let them go down the road, take a lap, and come back. Might be better for them. <laughs> no finger pointing, but there's been bad training that's taken place in likely most all of us here this morning. There's been dysfunctional parenting. There's been sibling rivalry. Schoolyard bullying not to mention the social atmosphere of high school. And in the marketplace, yeah, college, <laughs> in the marketplace. So we can come out of our adolescence, our young lives, bruised, and scarred from the past, things that have taken place, unrecognizable from who we were when we were born again, who we were when we were knit in our mama's womb. We change and we change and we change. And Jesus gave himself for us so that we could, we could be that essence of who we are. We could return to the future and the purpose and the hope that he's put in our lives. That's what he's done. We can recognize. The good news is, in Galatians 5 this morning, the good news is liberty. God's given us the liberty now. Now, do we, do we walk in that liberty or are we shut down? Are we shackled by it? When we talk to certain people or when we're in certain crowds, are we different? Or do we remain who we truly are? Do we have, do we have the, the spirit of chameleon? Chameleon? Almost said chameleon. Sorry. <laughs> Where when we're with, with, with different groups, we can be different people. I can fit in over here. I can fit in over here. Maybe they don't like me, but I don't care because I'm over here now. And I don't like you guys either. I'm going to go. And, and we change according to who we want to be. What we want to show. Great pretenders. Great pretenders. The church. Great pretenders. What is our witness? Whew. Jesus heals. He sets us free. Amen? No, amen. No, Jesus heals and sets us free. He does. Have you received your freedom? Have you received your healing? Or are you still shackled to the past? Whew. It's 
not only the young folks, it's all of us burdened by the past who lost that inner God-placed dream. Those who are shackled by failure, huh? We failed by abuse, by the weight of the law. Anyone who would sense within themselves that, hey, I know, I know, I know, I know, way down in my knower of knowers, I'm pretending. I, I am not the man that God made me to be. I'm not the woman God made me to be. There is so much more I can be if I would but release and allow the Lord to unlock the shackles that have me bound. Know that I haven't fully entered in to God's choices for me. On the outside, I can be that successful, fine-sounding Christian. Got a bookload of verses memorized, and I can tell you this, and I can tell you that, and I can help, I can direct your life. I know all of the answers for you. You know, I can be that great, successful Christian, or I can be like that on the outside, but like the racehorse on the inside, I can bring, be that broken warrior. Looks like a horse, smells like a horse. But he can't run. Whoo! If that's you this morning, I will remind you that you are not your past. You are not your past. Whatever has been back there is done. Can't go back. You can't change it. And maybe God doesn't want to change it. But we are to submit ourselves fully and completely to Him. And let Him take. Take what's left. Take what's left. You might say, well, man, I burned up the first 40. Why don't you take the rest, Lord? You know? Take what's left. Take today. Jesus, Lord, God, take today and do something with me. Take today. Release me from that thing that I am when I'm with different people. Release me from that. I just want to be me. Whether they like me or not, bomb. Not everybody's going to love you. The Bible says we have to love each other, yes? Sometimes we don't have to like it. But we got to love it. we got to love it. If that's you this morning, I remind you that. Your past doesn't define you. It's your attitude. It's your attitude that determines your altitude, right? It's your attitude. Jesus removes the yoke, those things that have crippled our minds. It doesn't matter what it is. Religion, whatever it is, that holds us back from the service of God. We've become psychologically handicapped. Don't even know it. Don't even know it. Don't even know the shape we're in. We've forgotten what it, what it is to be free in Jesus Christ this morning. If you know that there's something that's got your mind buggered up, if you've forgotten what you've been born to do, let's step out of that right now. Let's step out of that this morning. Let's move on. Get things showing here. We've we got... We've got a new year that's going to be upon us in a short amount of time. Wouldn't it be wonderful to enter into it, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward? Wouldn't that be good? Somebody say yes, that'd be good. That'd be good. That would be good, pressing toward the goal. If any of this speaks to your heart, I sure don't want to put anything on you that isn't yours. I'm not here to condemn, not here to convict. It's Holy Ghost. It's His job, not mine. Still in closing, I, I want us to ask Jesus to reestablish our freedoms this morning. Camille, would you come up? I, I want to end with that song again, if we can, in a, in a little bit here. Steve, Brother Steve. Because I, I really sense the need of a realization to take place in us. 
that our Redeemer lives. He does, and he lives with purpose. And, and I'll tell you what, we got to quit fiddle-farting around and get with the program. Get with the program. And I know somebody's saying, yeah, I'm already with the program, Pastor. Well, goody got on you. What about the rest of us? We could use a little encouragement. Slip a card in the mail, would you? We could use it. So let's ask Jesus to reestablish our freedom this morning. Release, remove, loose the bondages, the shackles, the burdens that we're, we're carrying. Like Pilgrim's Progress. Y'all seen that? Anybody seen that? Where the load gets heavier and heavier and heavier. We're not moving even in our, in, our, in our Christian walk as quickly as we once were. Instead of saying, yes, Lord, that sounds stupid. I'm doing it. <laughs> we become so religious, we go, is there a scripture for that? Uh, I'm going to put out a blanket. If it's wet in the morning, and we start testing God instead of moving and living and have our being in Him where we live from the inside out. There's so much of us living from the outside in with feelings and, and with what we see and what we hear rather than from the inside where the, where the Spirit of God lives and listening, putting an ear to His chest. Listening. He is our teacher, our counselor, our comforter. You wonder what it might be like to run free, unhindered, like you were born to do? You imagine the release in that horse when he was turned loose? Run it any way you run it, but run it. Run it. And yeah, it might take a little bit of this, but pretty soon you're going to be on course. And when you hit it, you're going to be straight on and in its face. I believe that. Free. When we first received by grace through faith such a great salvation, how much freedom did we have? I'll bet your feet didn't even hit the floor. I'll bet you floated for days when you invited Jesus into your heart, gave your life over to Him. It took the world to bring you back down. It took the world. How we ran the race in that day, huh? Maybe we just need to focus, feeling like we have been running round and round here and there, going fast, but in every direction, except you. I know it's been me. I'm trying to put out fires with an empty fire extinguisher. Beat it to death with a fire extinguisher. Just trying, trying. So, the message God has for us today, who are you? Who are you really? Who are you really? Quit pretending to be somebody you're not. Quit it. Quit it. Put it aside. Rise up and be the man and woman God has made you to be. Well, I don't know what that is. Here's a start. He knows, doesn't he? He knows. Go to him. Go to him. Spend some time with him. Hey, God! What's up? What's up? You say, hello, you little crazy thing. Get over here. i got some stuff to talk to you about. Didn't he ask us to, to sit and reason with him? He said, come, sit. Reason with me. You ever try to reason with God? I'm like, are you serious? Well, you know what I think? Yeah, I do. Well, you know what I would do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure would. I love you for that. But no. So 
So I want to pray. I want to pray with you this morning. And if you want to pray, you can pray. But I really want to ask that the Lord would infiltrate our lives. That He really would move in to the number one position in our lives. You know, some of us have said, well, Jesus is my co-pilot. Seriously? If you've got a brain in your head, He's going to drive. Not you. Yeah, he's in the driver's seat going, Oh! Whoo! Oh! Look at the edge! Get back, get back, get back! You're going too fast. Slow down. No, I want him in the driver's seat. I'll arrive safely wherever it is we're going. Amen. Well, Father God, you've told us to ask you for whatever we need. You said, Lord, if we ask, it would be given. If we seek it, we will find. If we knock, the door's going to be open to us. Well, here we are. We're asking. We're seeking. We're knocking. We ask for your guidance, direction in our lives this morning, Lord, for your vision on our behalf. You're a good, good father. You only give good gifts to your children. We're requesting right now. Maybe you will pray with me. Oh, Lord, help me to trust you with all my decisions and my future. Let me lean on you with all of my heart instead of relying on my own imperfect, limited, yeah, limited mm -hmm, understanding. Uh -huh. Give me clear guidance in my life, Lord. As I submit myself to you this morning, I know that I know that I know that I know that you will direct my path. That I can have confidence that your direction is always the best way to go. Lord, I only want to be. I only want to do what I was born to be, what I was born to do. Father God, hear our prayers this morning through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.